What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to do with you guys. This is the mini Boker Kalashnikov and I honestly didn't think that I would get a chance to review this mainly because it wasn't something that interested me uh, the first time that I saw it but my buddy Lon came through again and he said hey I've got the mini if you want to check it out in contrast with the uh, regular sized one and I said yeah I will and now that I've got it in hand there's actually a lot of, uh, there's a lot of cool stuff about it. We're going to talk all about it. Uh, real quick, I want to say thank you to all the new patrons. This is going way better than I thought it would. If you want to read about the special giveaway that I'm going to do once I hit 50 patrons, follow the link in the description uh, to my uh, Patreon and you can read the bold text where it explains there. Uh, we have a new patron, uh, Frankie at DWM underscore EDC on Instagram. Frankie became a elite, an elite metal knight uh, on my Patreon. So thank you very much, Frankie. That uh, I really, really appreciate that support. Uh, again, you can follow him on Instagram at D as in dog, W M as in Mary, uh, underscore EDC on Instagram. Uh, thanks again. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the meat and potatoes of this review, starting off with measurements let's get that guy straight here real quick overall length of the mini boker kalashnikov coming in at it's like five it's not quite six inches it's like five and three quarter inches overall how about the blade let's move this over here without knocking over my entire tripod blade length coming in at about two and a half inches actual cutting edge though probably only about two and a quarter so this is a small knife let me give you guys some size comparisons here up against the ontario wrap Model 1, you can see there, Rat 1 absolutely dwarfing it in size. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? PM2 coming in at 8.3 inches, again dwarfing the Mini Boker Kalashnikov. How about up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue? Ritter Hogue coming in at 8 inches. And last but not least, the smallest knife that I ever used as a size comparison, the uh, uh, Spyderco Delica. <laughs> forgot it there for a sec. Spyderco Delica coming in at seven inches overall. So you can see that the mini Boker Kalashnikov truly is a tiny knife. Let me show you guys this here real quick. Uh, I want to give you an example of the action here. Quite snappy. I did it at the beginning of the video, but I'm going to show you again. It really does have some kick to it for such a small knife. That was the first thing that I noticed that really shocked me uh, when I handled it. Let's go ahead and get a weight on this guy. Weight on the mini Boker Kalashnikov coming in at, oh, well, 59 grams. How about we change that real quick to um, ounces? <laughs> turn it back off and turn it back on. Sorry about that. Just put new batteries in it, so reset to grams, apparently. Uh, 2.08 ounces. Let's go again. 2.08 ounces. So as you could expect, um, it's a very light knife. This is a really interesting small automatic. Um, before we get into price and, and things like that, I think uh, I, I wasn't sure how I wanted to structure this. I think I'm just going to structure it the same way I always do. Let's talk about the anatomy. What we've got on this particular model is a black coated Tanto blade made out of Aus 8. Uh, moving down to the handle scales, we have black. I, I don't know if they're black coated. I think they're black coated. I mean, just judging by how the coating has worn off of this larger one here. I think they're just, it's just sort of paint on 6061 T6 aluminum handles. You have that really cool uh, Kalashnikov specific pivot there on the adjustment side. Um, you've got the uh, button here and then you've got some Torx heads for the, um, for the body screws. A couple of standoffs back here. Uh, some nice uh, meaningful jimping back here on the scales and the spine of the blade. Flipping it over, we have much of the same on the other side except you have a simple uh, female side of the pivot, uh, and then you have that weird cooked bacon pocket clip, which is just bizarre, you know, but it works. It gives you a lot of different traction points as you pull, you know, so if you're pulling out of your pocket and you miss there, oh, you got another one there, oh, another one there, oh, no, you know, you're going to get it out of your pocket. It's a deep carry clip too, so um, really, really easy to carry. I mean, as you can imagine, the footprint on this guy is super, super tiny. Let's take a look at it up against the regular sized uh, Boker Kalashnikov. I wish I had the large one. In fact, as soon as I, this one never wants to stand up perfectly straight. As soon as I, as I uh, had the, this medium one size in hand, um, I'm gonna see if I can prop it up with a pen. There you go. <laughs> as soon as I had this uh, medium size one in hand, 
Um, I, I was like, wow, you know, this is a great size. And then I was made aware that there actually is a larger size. And I honestly really, really like to get my hands on that one. Um, if you didn't watch my review of the Boker Kalashnikov, initially, I did not like it. I ordered one in CTS XHP because I thought, wow, for 60 bucks over the standard $45 one, that's this one here. Um, that's one of the least expensive knives I've ever seen in CTS XHP. Plus, you get a model that a lot of people like. CTS XHP is a great steal. I was like, you know, what could what could be wrong with that? And then I got it, and it was wobbly, and I did. Initially, I didn't like it. Then I checked out Lon's 13 or 14 year old Os 8 Boker Kalashnikov that he has beaten into the ground, and found that wow, this is actually a great knife. I'm, and so I kind of like. You know, I did another video saying I, I was wrong. You know, I was saying it was going to fail. The tolerances are going to come out of whack and it was just going to be all wonky within a few years. And we've got one that's 14 years old here that's got the same. I mean, the blade wobbles a little bit, but it's no different than the brand new one. So I, I was uh, forced to conclude that I was just wrong about it. Um, so I was happy to check out the little one. And anyways, I would be I'd really be excited to check out a larger one. But um, so the standard runs. 45 bucks and there's a variety of different blade shapes including a false dagger this drop point variant up here You can get tanto. I think there's a Warncliffe. Um, I don't know if all of those exact same blade shapes are available for the small one What I know for sure is that you can at least get an os8 tanto and an os8 drop point in either coated or uncoated blades I would imagine that somewhere there are also, you know, different maybe uh, an earth brown coating um, it wouldn't surprise me if there is a, a smaller dagger or that there maybe there would be in the future or if there's a worn clip as well. I do know for sure that they make manual variants of both of these knives. They also apparently did make a 70th anniversary CTS XHP small version of this in an uncoated drop point blade. And then they also apparently, and that I found that one on Grindworks for about 60 bucks. They also apparently currently make an $85, and I found this on Knife Center, an $85 manual CTS XHP version of the smaller one. I'm not so sure that $85 makes sense there, but I mean, comparatively with other knives out there that are CTS XHP, I, I'd still, I, there's an argument to be made that it's still a pretty good price. Um, at 60 bucks, yeah, it blows me away, 100%. Um, but those are your price ranges that I've seen out there. As far as I know, the large one, the one that's even bigger, I have to imagine it's like out here. Uh, that one does not come in CTS XHP yet, but I don't know that for sure. I could be wrong about that. There are so many different versions of this knife out there that I'm just not aware of everything. Um, the one you're seeing right here is an OS8 standard variant, Tanto. It's about a $40 knife. You probably can find it a little bit less in some other places. Taking a look at the handle scales, I mean, you can see here it's literally just a scaled down version of the larger one. Uh, but you do have a blade stock thickness that looks to be about the same as well as, are the handles about the same? The, the small one's a little tiny bit smaller. You do have what appears to be the exact same size screws between both. Let me flip them over here. I don't normally dual wield knives. So I'm having a hard time maneuvering. Um, yeah, the screws are the same size. The blade stock thickness looks to be almost exactly the same. The, the one on the left, the smaller one, might be ever so slightly thinner, but they really are close. As far as action between the two, um, they both feel incredibly snappy, though. The one that I'm working with here is much older, but I will tell you, this one doesn't feel a whole lot different than the one that I reviewed, which was brand new, that CTS XHP one. This one is also uh, impressively snappy. It's just smaller and lighter, so it has a different feel to it. Um, I would say it probably has ever so slightly a smaller spring in it, though it could just be the mass of the blade being flung out, creating additional recoil on the larger one. Here's the crazy part between the two. This one right here, it's got blade play. That, I mean, it does, obviously, it, it didn't really stop Lon from being able to use it appropriately. I asked him, I said, it ever not deploy or did it ever, you know, um, miss, I guess, misfire or fail in any way? And he said, no. Um, this one has zero blade play, up, down, left to right, which is really surprising for an automatic of this um, uh, price range and, and one that is, a, you know, push button automatic, I guess, is what I'm trying to get at. Um, that's really cool. And there's something really satisfying about a small knife with a two and a half inch blade that's an automatic, that's, you know, this price range that's built well, you know? 
OS8 isn't the best steel on the block. And 6061 T6 aluminum, it's it's an industry standard in a lot of ways. You can find it on $20 knives and you can find it on, well, you can find it on, prop, you know, $500 knives probably. You know, I, I think uh, Medford's new Praetorian Swift is made out of uh, that same grade of aluminum, you know. So you see that a lot. But what's really impressive is that this thing's fit and finish all the way around. Centered blade, doesn't rub, snappy action, no blade play. And you know what? It's just neat. It's a neat little automatic knife. And honestly, for the 40 bucks that they're asking, I mean, you've got you've got a tool here. Uh, I, I can't say that it's, you know, going to be like the most hard use, crazy tactical thing you've ever, ever used. But if you're in the market for a smaller knife, you know, maybe where you live limits you, you know, as far as what you can carry to length. Now, there's obviously still going to be places where this is just not legal. Um, so you still have to check your laws and do that kind of research for yourself. But if you're in a place where that allows automatic knives, but doesn't allow blades to be over two and a half inches, um, you know, this is a, this is a great option. I mean, of course that does, if you find yourself in that situation where the knife is being questioned, it really depends on, you know, the, the mood of the police officer and how he wants to measure it. Cause it really, it's like I said, I think it's right at two and a half inches. Let's measure it again here. Yeah, it's right at two and a half inches. So you're gonna have to be careful about that, but it's just cool, you know? Um, I, I'm not a huge fan of Tantos, but I can understand why some people would be. This is easy to manipulate. Um, it's one of those, I mean, it's a small automatic knife, so you'd think that I might be worried about whether or not I'm gonna be able to hold on to it. Actually, the bracing points on the pocket clip and those ridges that I don't like, ironically create um, a nice position for my fingers when I'm trying to hold on to the knife and deploy it. And since it's so small and that spring isn't quite, you know, the craziest tension in the entire world, it's actually really easy to manipulate with one hand. Of course, you do have to make sure that you get your fingers out of the way. And with any automatic, you run the risk of slipping your hand off the blade while you're readjusting your fingers to get ready to close the knife. And then it opens again and flies out of your hand. I mean, that definitely does happen. So you got to be aware of that. But as far as a, just a small EDC pocket tool that's also an automatic knife, Oh my gosh, for $40? Yeah, I think this is super cool. I mean, you know, would it, would it be nice to have it in a little bit better steel? You know, if you can get your hands on that 70th, 70th anniversary version in CTS XHP um, that's an automatic, I think that's an even better deal. The manual one at $85, I don't know, why are they charging more money for the manual one? I mean, is it less money somewhere else and I'm just, I'm just not properly informed? I don't know. I don't understand why they're charging more money for it. I don't think it's necessarily a bad price, but... Why would you pay, I mean, if you could pay $25 less for one that's automatic with the same grade of steel, why would you not do that, you know? So, yeah, if you can find the uh, the other one out there, I feel like everywhere I checked, they were sold out. And I don't know if they're exclusive to anywhere or not, but um, this is one of those models where it's really hard to get an all-encompassing view of everything that's available, all colors, all steels, and where those specific steels are available. As far as I know, it's not exclusive to any retailer, but I've been wrong about stuff like that before. As usual, my uh, my viewers are pretty good about correcting me, so if you're wanting an answer and you're watching this in the future, just scroll down and look in the comments and I guarantee somebody has uh, somebody has, has corrected me or answered that question for me there. But honestly, guys, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all I can say about this knife. This is just a great knife. Um, and as far as like which I'd recommend, um, for me, I mean, my hand fits a little bit better on this one. You know, to me, this is a seven and a half. I think the, the larger one is seven and a half inches overall. I just did that exact thing I was talking about where my hand slipped off the blade. You have to be careful about that. You don't have that problem as much with the smaller one because it's easy to get your hand all the way around there and get it in position. But this one fits my hand a little better, so I'm a little bit more partial to that. Though I will say, you know, you are kind of cramped here, but it, I mean, it, for having, for it being such a tiny knife, the control that I feel like I have on this thing is really good. We didn't talk about ergonomics and purchase, but on such a little knife for it being automatic, I'm really, really happy with the ergonomics on the thing. I don't have a problem with it. Um, so pick the one that's right for you or that's legal or, what, you know, for whatever your, your intended uh, use is with the knife, pick the one that's right for you. But I really, really like the small um, Boker Kalashnikov, and it, it absolutely is going to be a rec. A rec a, excuse me, geez, I can't talk today. It absolutely is a recommended knife and it's going to go on my most recommended knives playlist. Um, so, so definitely give it a look. But anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video or at least found it informative, please leave a like. 
If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check that stuff out. And if you enjoy all my content, then please subscribe to my channel because there's definitely more coming. Thanks for watching and have a great day.